Hello, I'm Dr. Mystic. Welcome to this episode of the St. Jude Thaddeus Story. In this episode, we're going to look at the Last Supper and the words that St. Jude Thaddeus spoke to Jesus at the Last Supper. And this is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 22. And it says, Judas, not Iscariot, and this is uh, to remind us that there are two apostles named Judas. Judas Thaddeus, the good guy, and Judas Iscariot, the bad guy. Right? One was a faithful disciple, an apostle. The other was a traitor and was filled with the devil. So that's how you differentiate the two St. Judes. And usually in English, uh, the name Judas has become like a byword you know, for uh, a word that means a traitor or an evil person, a Judas. So we don't want to use that name for Judas Thaddeus. So in English, we call him Jude to differentiate him. To tell the good apostle for the bad traitor, we call Judas Thaddeus. We call him Jude Thaddeus, and we call Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot. Uh, but in the original Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek, it's the same name, right? Judah. Uh, so here in the King James, in the, the epistle, it's the epistle of St. Jude we don't say the Epistle of St. Judas in English like they do in Spanish. In Spanish, it's Judas, Judas Tadio. Uh, but here we have in English, it says here in our King James Version, Judas, not Iscariot, said unto him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself or manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus said, If a man love me, he will keep my words. My Father will love him, and we will come into him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not will not keep my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, which I have spoken unto you. So it's very significant that we have an account of an important conversation between Jesus and Thaddeus. And it's this conversation about the nature of salvation. And it's important for us all to listen to the call of God, to hear, heed, listen to, and obey, and open our hearts. What Jesus is saying, that each individual, you have to come to, you have to make a decision for yourself to come to God. You have to open your heart to Jesus yourself, and then the Lord will come into your heart. The Father and the Son will abide, and through the Holy Spirit will abide in your spirit, in your heart. In this same chapter, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. And I want to encourage you to understand and know that, as it says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died, died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. But he knows you, he died for your sins, and he wants you to be saved. So I hope that you would open your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and be born again. You can pray a prayer like this. Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I repent for my sins, and I confess that Christ is Lord. Because if we believe in our heart that Christ is Lord, and, and know in our heart that God, he has risen from the dead, that we shall be saved. So we claim your promises, and we lay hold of salvation. In the name of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his holy name. Amen. So, salvation is a free gift. Jesus paid the price on the cross of Golgotha for you. And my hope is that you would find life's meaning and, and purpose and live an abundant life through having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So please stay tuned for upcoming programs to follow the life, the ministry of St. Jude Thaddeus, the apostle of the impossible. A new commandment I give to you, that you should love one another, just as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I have eagerly awaited to eat this Passover with you before I suffered. For I tell you, I shall not eat of it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of heaven. Take this bread and consume all of it, for it is my body, which has been broken.
This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it. All of it. Do this in remembrance of me. One of you will betray me, and all of you will lose faith in me. One of your apostles will betray you. How could this be, Lord? Surely it's not I, is it? No. But all of you, even you, will lose faith. Even if everyone else denies you, I never will. I'm willing to die for you. Before the rooster crows, you will deny him knowing three times. But do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back to you to take you with me so that you may be where I am. If you love me and obey my commands, I shall reveal myself to you. Lord, how is it you reveal yourself to us and not the world? Those who love me will obey my commands, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them make our home with them. What I say to you are the words of my Father. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he will send you another comfort, the Holy Spirit, that he may dwell with you forever. I will not leave you comfortless and I will come to you. Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. I tell you these things now, so that when they occur, you will know Believe. Now the Prince of Darkness approaches, but he has no power over me. For I willingly submit to my Father's words, so that the whole world will know the love of my Father. Come, let us go.